Welcome back to AP Daily Practice Sessions for AP Art History. I'm Lacey Van Reef, and in this video, we're going to learn how to best respond to FRQ number three on your AP Art History exam, Visual Analysis of an Unknown Work. If you would like to work through this FRQ with me, click on the link over the video now, and you can download the PDF of the FRQ that's going to be featured in this video. So AP Art History FRQ number three is Visual Analysis of an Unknown Work. These are things to know and things to do. You're gonna have 15 minutes suggested time to work on five task points. All of the short FRQs are 15 minutes. They all have five task points. There's five things you have to answer. The image provided, this is a key here for question number three, for FRQ number three. The image provided will not be one of the 250 official curriculum images, but it probably will be very similar to a work that you did learn. This shouldn't scare you. You don't have to know about the work specifically. This is a visual analysis question. And as always, for all FRQs, write in complete sentences, use keywords from the question as well in your response that indicates for the reader uh, you're answering that part of the question. So that's important. So here is the question that we're gonna be working through. The conversion of St. Paul created by Caravaggio. I'm not going to read through this right now because we're going to break it down on one of the, the slides coming up, but here's the question. And that image is not one of the 250 artworks. Don't be shocked. Don't be scared. You're supposed to have never seen this before. They're asking you to use your visual analysis skills, your eyeballs, and describing what you see. And you got to answer the task of the question. So it's not on the 250, but man, that looks a lot like this one. It looks very similar to this work. And that's the point. Um, they're, they're not asking you to like describe something out of left field. They're giving you something that, that has some familiarity to it. And that is somewhat similar to something that you did learn. So it does look very similar to that work. So tidbit number one, when you embark upon visual analysis of an unknown work, FRQ number three, uh, all of the tasks in the FRQ ask for a visual description or visual evidence. This is a visual analysis question. So every component has some sort of visual element. And tidbit number two, the final task will be a little bit more contextual, but you can use the information that you learned about the work that's like it, that is on the curriculum to help you answer it. You don't need to know about this work to do excellent on this FRQ. And you're gonna be thinking about this work. Everything you learned about that work can pretty much apply to this work. So here's the question, let's break this down. The work shown is the conversion of St. Paul created by Caravaggio around 1601 CE during the Baroque era. So they give us the title, the artist, the date it was made and the period, the artistic era during which it was made. Describe, that's one of our task verbs. Describe what you see. Describe at least two visual characteristics of the conversion of St. Paul. You're describing two things about the work that you see. That's task one and task two. Has to be two different things. Using specific visual evidence, explain. We're asking, or they're asking us to do more now. It's not just describe, we are explaining, but we are using visual evidence to help us explain at least two ways in which Caravaggio creates a sense of drama in the painting. That's T3 and T4. And then using specific visual evidence, again, visual evidence, visual analysis question, explain, there's our task verb, explain equals depth how the conversion of St. Paul demonstrates change from artistic traditions of the Renaissance. So this question does require us to know what Renaissance art looked like. And they already told us this painting is Baroque. So we are gonna have to do a little bit more critical thinking with that particular task. That's task five. So let's approach this task by task. Describe at least two visual characteristics of the conversion of St. Paul. This would be an example of a weak response. The painting shows many colors. The painting depicts two people and a horse. Why is this a weak response? The painting shows what colors? Be specific. The painting depicts two people and a horse. What are the two people doing? What is the horse doing? Talk about the composition. Like that is just, a doesn't give us much. Doesn't give us much at all. Not good. Here is a strong response. One visual characteristic of the conversion of St. Paul is the man on the ground with outstretched arms. So they're being specific in their response here about what the man is doing and the position his body is in. He is laying below the horse with a lifted hoof. Nice. 
Another visual characteristic of the conversion of St. Paul is that all of the bodies of the men depicted are incredibly realistic and even idealized. Their bodies are depicted with accuracy and proportion and anatomical musculature. Wow. They're not just saying there's two men. They're talking about the specifics of their musculature and the accuracy of their bodies. Another nice response. So that is definitely two awesomely described visual characteristics of this painting. Now we're gonna move on to task number three. Using specific visual evidence, we're doing more with that visual evidence now. Explain at least two ways in which Caravaggio creates a sense of drama in the painting. So first we have to ask ourselves this. What is dramatic about this painting? What is dramatic? Why is it dramatic? The lighting is dramatic. The subject matter is super dramatic. The composition is very dramatic. So how do we write that out? How do we explain? Use visual evidence to explain how Caravaggio creates a sense of drama here. This would be an example of a weak response. The light in the painting is dramatic. Okay, what about the light in the painting is dramatic? Come on, give me more. The composition of the painting is dramatic. All right, cool. What about the composition is dramatic? That is giving me no kind of depth, no kind of detail in the explanation. So that is why this is a weak response. Let's check out what a strong response would look like. One way that Caravaggio creates a sense of drama is with the use of dramatic theatrical lighting called tenebrism. Uh, some areas of the painting are intensely lit and bright while other parts of the painting are in the dark shadows. So it identifies tenebrism, but then it even describes what tenebrism is. Another way that Caravaggio creates a sense of drama is the extreme use of diagonals in the composition. Talking about the diagonals all throughout the painting, allowing the viewer's eye to move throughout the dramatic moment depicted when St. Paul falls off his horse. That's another great response. Now for our final task, using specific visual evidence, explain how the conversion of St. Paul demonstrates change from the artistic traditions of the Renaissance. Well, we have to talk about the Renaissance now. What did the Renaissance look like? Light was used more naturally, unlike the Baroque when they use light in a very dramatic fashion. Art was super religious in the Renaissance, but it was not this dynamic or confrontational or in your face. Let's think of works like Da Vinci's Last Supper or Raphael's School of Athens. They are nothing close to the drama of this painting. So feel free to, to talk about Renaissance work specifically in this part of the question. So let's see an example of a weak response. This painting demonstrates change from the artistic traditions of the Renaissance because the painting is more dramatic and Renaissance painting were not, paintings were not dramatic like this one. Doesn't tell me anything. You're just kind of repeating the question and saying Renaissance painting weren't as dramatic. Cool, not cool. Doesn't, doesn't really answer the question at all. Dances around the question, repeats the question. So that's not good. Let's check out what a strong response would look like. This work demonstrates change from the artistic traditions of the Renaissance because of the dramatic tenebrism used to communicate an intense spiritual moment experienced by the subjects. In the earlier Renaissance, light was not used as dramatically, but instead more naturalistically. During the Baroque era, the Counter-Reformation caused many Catholic artists like Caravaggio to utilize light in a more intense theatrical way in order to instill a sense of awe and spiritual awakening as seen in works like this one and Caravaggio's Calling of St. Matthew. That is an awesome response. Lots of depth, connecting it to historical moments uh, like the Counter-Reformation, comparing it to Caravaggio's Calling of St. Matthew. That's an awesome in-depth explanation. So kudos to that response. So things to remember for FRQ number three, guys, all tasks have some sort of visual component, either a visual description or visual evidence to support an explanation. That's important. Use keywords from the FRQ in your response. This lets the reader clearly know which task you're addressing. One piece of visual evidence is, one piece of visual evidence is. Do that, it helps. And then use accurate and appropriate art historical vocabulary whenever you can, like the word tenebrism. That's important. Feel free to make connections to other works that are on the curriculum, like you see in that final part of the response they did by connecting it to the calling of St. Matthew as well, another Caravaggio work, the one that is on the curriculum. So 
Write in complete sentences, always try your best with spelling. That is always your goal with FRQs on the AP Art History exam. I hope you all learned a little bit more about visual analysis of an unknown work. FRQ number three, thank you for watching.